being as I have worked in public libraries since I was 14, I'm now 63, um, the libraries have left their stamp on me. So I wanted to have a really cool library in my fantasy world, and I put it there. Hi, I'm Ivan with Many Realms, and today we're talking all about Candlekeep. For many folks, Candlekeep Mysteries, which was an anthology of adventures released in 2021, was their first introduction to Candlekeep. Today, Ed Greenwood gives us the gift of never-before-revealed secrets of Candlekeep. And if you're hungry for more Secrets of the Realms, be sure to find Ed on Patreon, where you'll get an exclusive look into the mind of the original creator of the Forgotten Realms. Extended videos, fully narrated write-ups, exclusive Discord roles and community tools, and more lore than you can shake a wizard staff at. Stop missing out and become a protector of the realms today. Candlekeep is the largest known by the public repository of written lore anywhere in the known realms. It's right on the coast of the Sword Coast. Um, and there's huge monastery that looks so, sort of like a castle fortress rising right out of the rocks and sea mists and it contains a gigantic library that is looked after by the avowed monks of um, Ogma and Denir and augmented by every single visitor except for a special few certain um, rulers certain sages and, and on a personal level you know that the have already paid their dues or are very important are, are allowed in without paying the entrance fee for everybody else the entrance fee is a copy of a work that candlekeep doesn't yet owe if the door guard likes it it can be an accounts ledger or a romantic chapbook or it can be um somebody's family history in fact most of them are histories of minor unknown families because that adds to the lore of Candlekeep. Whatever it is, if the tome is accepted, you get in. And the reason why you would want to get into Candlekeep is to do research, to look up stuff and ask questions, and the avowed will help you locate the right tome. Candlekeep is warded, magically protected. Some of the monks are very powerful magically, and it has all sorts of hidden things. Like any library, it has open stock that you can see. It has stacks where you have to ask somebody to retrieve a book for you, and it has hidden rooms. There are actually rooms in Candlekeep chambers that you can only reach by using magical tokens because there's no passage leading to them. They're in solid rock, so they can very much guarantee that unauthorized eyes, no matter how good they are, can't get to some of the tomes. But that's what Candlekeep is for. It's a repository of knowledge, both forbidden and powerful and magical and everyday, because you never know what's going to be valuable to know until much later on. So you keep everything. That applies to your game as well. Knowing that something like Candlekeep exists, I imagine that was at least part of the narrative function. You can always bring your party there to find the answers to something that they might otherwise not have answers to so i mean for a, for a narrative from a narrative perspective that's great you did also say that the avowed watch over candlekeep and i was wondering how important to the workings of candlekeep is its religious function i know there's spirit soaring which is you know uh, the temple to denier but it's also kind of a repository of knowledge and i'm wondering if there are some of those similar elements going on with candlekeep or if it's kind of uh i would be i would say secular it's far less of a strictly religious monastery because you have faiths working together and you have the public involved and it has its own rituals that some of which have to do more with being a sage for instance the quasi-religious ritual that most people know of that they will sort of witness if they're a visitor is the endless chant of Alondo. And that's where the procession winds its way through all of the various buildings in, in Candlekeep, chanting all of Alondo's chants that haven't come true yet. When they, when they judge that one of them has happened, they drop it from the end of the endless chant. So the chant gets shorter over the years. And there's much study and rejoicing when it's confirmed that something's happened. Alondo is not the only prophet. There were others. You know, prophet is sort of a dirty word in most of the realms because they don't want to confuse somebody who predicts with somebody who religiously predicts. Mm, yeah. And that's why the word prophet is a bit loaded. Most faiths 
want to reserve that word unto themselves. What it is, is an acknowledgement that the repository of knowledge has an incalculable value in and of itself because kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, empires rise and empires fall, entire races get swept away. But if the lore is preserved, then we know what happened in the past and nobody can rewrite it. And we have professional rewriters called minstrels and bards, as well as, you know, sermonizing clergy walking around the realms all the time rewriting history for various reasons, sometimes unwittingly, but you want to keep the lore. The only library of comparable breadths is the High Heralds maintain a library in Heralds Holdfast, but Candlekeep has everything. The full Dewey Decimal system, to put it that way. Uh, being as I have worked in public libraries since I was 14, I'm now 63, so that's quite a few years, <laughs> um, the libraries have left their stamp on me. So I wanted to have a really cool library in my fantasy world, and I put it there. Yes, before D&D. &D. <laughs> so, Ed, a little Tressum told me that you might have some never-before-revealed lore about Candlekeep that you'd be willing to share with us today. Oh, certainly. For today, I have four hitherto unrevealed secrets. Some large, some small, but four. Number one, Candlekeep contains the book that writes itself, which is a tome of blank pages slowly filling with advice for the sworn devout of Ogma. An unseen hand pens new sentences, and the writer is Ogma. Ogma himself. Yes, or so it is believed. The writer never. The writer never says, "Hi, I'm Agma." No, but <laughs> but it is the belief of all the avowed in Candlekeep, handed down for lo, these many generations down the centuries, that the book is being personally written by Ogma. Second secret of Candlekeep: Candlekeep contains several tome guardians, but one of them is a fairy dragon. This tome guardian watches over visitors and avowed, and it pounces if they damage, despoil, or try to steal a book. This fairy dragon is an elder fairy dragon, Anralavra by name, and she has a paralyzing venom tail sting, and she was given this tail sting, magically, in 1376 by Kalue Velador, the seventh of the Seven Sisters, in return for aiding Kalue in a hard battle. So, beware, Anralavra, the fairy dragon tome garden. <laughs> that's, a, that's one hell of an alarm system. I was expecting, like, a loud siren, a klaxon, maybe some armed guards, but nope, a poison sting from a fairy dragon. <laughs> now, remember... This, this sting, all it does is paralyze. Number three in our s hitherto unrevealed secrets of Candlekeep. Candlekeep contains the Book of the Blade. This is a book that contains a single word, Vernarostra. What? Excuse me? <laughs> Ver Vernarostra. When this word is uttered aloud by someone touching the written word, at the same time as they utter it. In other words, you open the book, you put your finger on the written word, and then you say the written word, Verna Rostra. It transforms the tome into a weightless glass steel plus four long sword. Only the Harpers, the High Heralds, the Chosen of Mistra, and two senior avowed know of the book and its properties and its hidden whereabouts. So, just between you and me, this little secret, I guess now that all of you know it, um, <laughs> well, anyway, whoops. Yeah, only, <laughs> only the chosen, yeah. some very high up Harpers, and now everybody watching this video know of the books existing. Everybody watching this. Okay, the fourth and final secret of Candlekeep that we're going to reveal here and now is Candlekeep contains... The Lichni Librum, the Lichni Librum, a slender chapbook in which Velsharun, the deity Velsharun, has recorded the precise whereabouts of the Drezrum, D-R-A-E-S-R-U-M, Drezrum, 
sometimes called by the uninitiated phylacteries, although, strictly speaking, phylacteries are holy texts, the whereabouts of the Dresrum of twenty-four powerful liches of Toril, including, it's rumored, Zastam and Vecna. When a Dresrum is moved, Velsharun updates its entry in the book. So you're telling me that the Dresrum or the phylacteries of Zastam and Vecna are are in this book in Candle Key. And wait a minute, does that mean Vecna is back in the realms? It would appear so, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I I was... I have no comment. But but <laughs> um because um bad things will happen to me if I comment about um Ser Vecna. But yes, <laughs> it would appear so. It would appear so. So, Ed, I feel like it would be very easy for some people playing in Candlekeep to get overwhelmed just by the sheer breadth of things there are to do. And also, I feel like I know me personally might have a difficult time not wanting to like screw up what's canon or do something somewhat irreparable. Um, because it is such a staple of the realms. Do you have any advice for people that are looking to role play in Candlekeep and not get overwhelmed by these things? Sure. You can constrict player surroundings and activities very easily. Think of a library that you always have a minder, as in, there's a very nice little old lady who need not be female and need not be little and need not be old, is convinced that every single person who steps into the library is here to steal books, burn books, <laughs> tear books apart. So she never leaves you alone for five seconds. She's watching you like a hawk. Very politely, she's at your elbow. She's assisting you. And if you say to her, you know, I really need to see that atlas again, she says, but of course. And she turns, gives a signal to another person who scuttles off and gets the atlas. She doesn't leave you. So another avowed is always within sight. So if you just decide that this little old lady is so insufferably a pain in the patoot and you just walk behind her and <laughs> clonk her across the head so she just starts to fall over unconscious and then you lower her gently into a seat. And so you can tell somebody, oh, uh, she was tired. I think she's just napping. There's going to be a second avowed, at least one, and probably a third one using a spy hole somewhere watching you that you can't see. And the other thing is, think of Candlekeep as a, a castle. Now imagine the grim gray walls are covered up to beyond comfortable reach. Bookshelves everywhere, crammed with books. And all of these bookshelves are like 14, 16, 20 feet tall. They have a rail way up high with a library ladder rolls sideways along it so you can reach the upper shelves. And you can't see any doors anywhere because every single bookcase could be a door, and most of them are. You don't have to worry about player characters wandering everywhere in Candlekeep. No, they can't wander anywhere. <laughs> and it's basically a library where, you know, you're sitting reading. So the dungeon master can just describe the most restrictive school library that any player has ever been in. People shh you every five seconds. And you can only use books that are brought to you. And in some cases, you will be given gloves and asked to don them before you're allowed to touch a single book. So you don't have to worry about, oh, we have to explore the entire thing. I have to map it. I, no, you're not going to be allowed to go anywhere. Therefore, it's really easy to dungeon master because it's just sitting in a room reading things, asking questions, and the Dungeon Master tells you what's on the pages of the books. What it is, can, and can be really cool, is finding stuff with research and reading out the passages and having player characters say, can I copy this down? I would hate to defile the sanctity that is Candlekeep, but I gotta say, Ed, it sounds like a ripe opportunity for a heist. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? And that would be the last coherent thought you ever had. No, uh... <laughs> Just remember, Candlekeep is haunted, and the ghosts are guardians of Candlekeep and everything in it. And some of the avowed are very powerful in an adventuring sense. And boy, will they be hurt <laughs> if you start a fight in a place with all these precious tomes. So they're going to lower the boom on you as fast as and hard as they can, because they want to protect those books. And one of the ways they can do it is 
to teleport you into a cavern in the solid rock. Bing. So like level three, four, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so problem gone. And then we'll just leave you there for six or seven days till you're really thirsty and starving. Then we'll go and talk to you about the bad thing that you did, the inappropriate behavior in the library, which means you're never going to be allowed back in there again. Hi, Realms fans. Welcome back to another little segment of Realm Speak, where we tackle words, names, and phrases of the realms that you might stumble over pronouncing, and we stumble over them for you and tell you how most people in the realms might pronounce them. This time around, let's begin with this. The ruler of the nine hells. Asmodeus is correct. Asmodeus is correct. It's okay. It's all in where you place the emphasis. And guess what? Asmodeus, or Asmodeus, he hears and answers all of them. And by the way, there's a spell jamming ship just sitting there as one of the buildings incorporated. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you can see it. Marco um, did a wonderful map that was in Elminster's Candlekeep Compendium and which wizards took one look at it and, and said, oh.